Nami DuPage is your resource for free mental health services. Whatever your needs, we offer one-on-one support with a trained peer specialist, weekly support groups, or we serve as an alternative to the hospital ER with our family education classes. We also offer social recreation classes for you and your family, as well as job readiness programs. At our beautiful community center in Wheaton, you will find a safe, non-judgmental, and supportive environment to help with your mental health needs. Dip my shrimp. Much for joining for tasting time. I'm Katie O'Reilly and welcome to KDO's Food Carnival. This is my episode on Feed the People. One of the most intriguing episodes I can share with you. It's a heartfelt experience I hope you all come and join me on. My featured artist is John Donovan. Now John has such a story I can't resist not sharing much of it with you myself and allowing it to be revealed naturally from his mouth and my experience. There is so much in life that all of us feel a pull to change, make a difference, impact the world, but we don't know how, we don't know how to begin, and we don't know what the right actions are to take. And today, hopefully, the stories that we're gonna share are going to be, in a way, kind of helping you at home to really pull from that inner place to make a difference. There are simple suggestions. Even when I take you into tasting time and the food tips, I'm gonna show you ways that are not that expensive or not that difficult to create that are going to help you and all of us make a difference in the world. Now that's one way that I can express to you that you might gather from watching this episode. But let me open up another door. I invite any of you in to this world, to this episode, especially if you're struggling. If you're sitting at home and you think that no one hears you and no one experiences what you're going through and there's no way out, listen, stop and join us. Because John's story is a story of a miracle. And all of us have that miracle in us and we have that inner strength. And we can help each other and ourselves to find it. So this is such an exciting, inspiring episode, and it also introduces the interconnectedness of lives. And you're gonna hear that, and you're gonna experience that when John and I sit down to share. So welcome to this episode of Feed the People. I am so excited to bring you with me on this journey. Let's meet John. This is my featured guest, And what we're going to start with is, first I want John, welcome John, to start with just kind of a profile of who's John today. So just give us a little kind of rundown and share with us, like, for me, you're one of my great friends and you're my dear friend, but share with us, the rest of the world, who you are, because you're great. Well, I'm John Donovan. I um, own a company by the name of Donovan Food Brokerage in Chicago. I... uh, represent about 25 different companies with the sale of their food products in the state of Wisconsin and Illinois. I'm a father of three children, um, married 40 years, almost 40 years, uh, a very active person, try to um, be involved in a lot of people's lives, um, and then really have been um, looking forward to this date with Kate. Awesome. Mm-hmm. Now this is, okay, I... There is something that happened 30 years ago in my life that was so impactful that it actually changed me in ways that I had no idea at the time. And back in 1986, I was struggling a lot with 
my spirituality. I had been raised a Catholic for eight years. I had gone into high school, into the inner city, out from the suburbs. And I was challenged with a lot of, I was presented with some world religions, and I was challenged with the limitations of, I hate, I'm not offending anybody, but at the 15 year old self that I was in, I was challenged with the limitations of the Catholic Church. And my, my dad and mom decided to join an inner city church, Old St. Pat's, which had about six other parishioners. We had a new priest who was starting to be ambitious and to develop a community. But at the time it was like chain link fences and everything was run down. And I remember one day dragging my feet to go into this church and here I am struggling with my inner self, not wanting to go as a 15 year old rebellious girl. And here on the steps of Old St. Pat's, I see this guy and he's got no shoes and he's homeless. And I think to myself, in my inside of myself, now that's how I would make a difference. That's the person, not just sitting in a church listening. So here I am and I remember that day vividly. And I went into that church and I heard from Father Wall, who was this inspiring priest building this community, about this man. And he's talking about how, just saying hello, and realizing that to make a difference, it's right there in front of us. And it changed my perceptions, it softened my heart and it opened my ears to then be part of this community again. And I remember that day, it was super impactful and Father Wall is a dear friend and he's been influential in my life ever since, since then. And I feel like I've nurtured and developed my spirituality. Now, the interconnectedness comes in, and I'm going to turn this story over to you, John, because 30 years ago, where were you? Well, 30 years ago, I was not in a good place. I, um, I was challenged with the demon called alcohol, and it, it um, literally destroyed my, oh, came very close to destroying my life. I um, became homeless. I was um, really... Uh, I couldn't make decisions for myself. I uh, was going from drink to drink. Life had really become a, uh, a journey that nobody wants to take. I um, was struggling for any kind of help that I could get, and it was difficult to see. I mean, for me today, it's very difficult to see the people that are on the streets begging because, quite frankly, that was me years ago. Um, my perception of people and... and um, the reality of who people are and how kind they are to people. And obviously, I have a different perception than a lot of people. Um, what is your perception? I mean, let me just stop you there. Like, what? honestly, all of us have to yeah. have to ask that question. You're standing there. What? If I'm walking by you, which I was, what would you have wanted from me at that time? The, what could I have done to help? That somebody wants, honest. Obviously, they're looking for some money. In my case, I was looking for some money for alcohol at the time. But in in all instances, you just want people to be try to treat you as a human being. To see uh, you, right? To feel to, you, yeah. To treat you as a human being. When I finally um, was fortunate enough to um, to make a decision to get better, very difficult when you're in acute alcoholism to make decisions. How, was there any one trigger that really you know, sparked that grain of close, sand of hope and Katie, strength? It was close to my son's birthday. Okay. And I knew about the birthday. Mm. Um, and I also knew about uh, a wonderful place called the Harbor Light Salvation Army that um, I had noticed in years past that it, it uh, gave people some an opportunity to live. And so I uh, was at the time sort of living on the streets, living at the airport, and I took a train that I had borrowed money on and appeared at the Salvation Army Harbor Light, which was 1515 West Monroe. And at the time, I mean, quite frankly, you know, people talk about religion and who, who believes what I desperately believe in a higher power. Um, at that point, I showed up at about four in the afternoon at... Uh, April the 21st, 1986, mm -hmm. at the Salvation Army, and um, as I was walking down, all I could think about was vodka, and as I walked up those steps, that uh, that incredible compulsion was removed. No, I, I, I have to, I have to take this and just take a minute, because that is so powerful, and 
All of us have the ability to make a difference in our lives and to make those decisions. There is inner strength that brought you there. There's an inner voice that says, I can be something else. And thank you for sharing such a vulnerable experience with all of us. And I hope anybody out there, if you're struggling in any way, you will find that hope as well. And so John, your journey. Well, my journey, I did spend quite a long time at the Salvation Army. I was um, in their rehab unit and I, I knew that mentally, physically and spiritually, I was not ready for the world yet. Um, I spent one full year uh, living at the Salvation Army, doing small jobs. Keep it uh, simple at first. I, I, was, I had to dedicate myself to this disease I had, or learning how to live with it. Yeah. Um, it's not something that uh, you just uh, understand and put in your life. It's a long journey to figure out how to live with something that's, that you think about all the time. And the family unit at home had to just wait and be patient they, for you to work on your own recovery. Is that correct? It was a slow reintroduction back yeah. to my family. It, um, my wonderful, wonderful wife uh, knew oh, how 40 years. I was. Let's just make note. Yeah. She stood by you. She stood by me. The and love. We, yeah, the love. We still are together in a very unique marriage mm -hmm. that has gone through, you know, almost like an atomic bomb. And uh, I generally, she's the best person I could be with in the world. There is so doubt. much hope just yeah. in that whole situation and that family and that recovery because I know your wife and I know you and I know your kids. And it's so different today that if we can remind ourselves that ch things do change if we're willing yeah. to make change. Well, I, when you, you know, when you look back, I, which I do, I work in a jail and I'm an addiction counselor in a jail one Fabulous. day a week. And at times, you know, I'm dealing with people that are right in the disease and yeah. I, I have to go back to where I was. And it's almost like two lives. I, um, yeah, I was John, the person before, you know, 36 years old. And today I'm John. That's quite a bit different. I, uh, I, I'm very careful about where I go and who I'm with. Um, I am not around alcohol at all. Really, if I might be there for a few minutes and then I leave. I mean, so I you own make the you make choices, and yeah. those choices impact you. But today, I think one thing to reiterate: today you have the power of choice. I do have the power of choice. And, but my, you know, my choices are so simple today. Mm -hmm. I draw, that's my enjoyment. I watch a lot of soccer games, which I very much enjoy. I play with my grandkids. That's awesome. I, um, 68, still running long distance races. Um, Inspiring. My life has been normal. Yeah. It's been normal and good. I, I don't, my business has been successful. We have eight full-time employees. Um, it's incredible. I, Your business is incredible. Yeah, I mean, I have not made a, too much of an effort to explain too much about my background. If somebody asks, I do use it for recovering people. Sure. But for a long period of time, I did talk quite a bit about it the first five or six years. And later on in my life, I just, you know, I'm part of society. I, yes. I don't want people like going into my past unless I permit you know, give them permission to start entering my past. I always kind of view it like this. We all have struggles. We all have obstacles. And how we deal with that, it's like, okay, so you heal from it, you survive it, but then you thrive from it. And you're a prime example of being a person who thrives from all that life has brought him. And you use that and don't stay in it. Yeah. You just you make it a beautiful thing. I, I, you know, I've had my challenges like any businessman. I mean, sure. I'm just like any businessman in the world, but I, you know, I'm very, very persistent. If, if something's there and an opportunity, I will give it a try. I mean, when I, I couldn't get a job, nobody would hire me. And I decided, well, I'll go out and start my own company, which I did um, without a license. I was using city buses, Mm -hmm. I used any way I could do it. I, my first office was a, uh, on top of a hot dog stand on 18th Street in Chicago. That's, and, that's um, incredible. Every because move has been, yeah. has been a progressively better move. My son now is in the business and taking it over. And it's, it's, it's really, I think it's that's one cool. of the bigger uh, food brokerage companies in the Midwest right now. Very capable. Um, 
but I, that that thought of what where I came and where I where I was just is never far from my brain, Katie. Okay, so for all of everybody watching out there, I think sometimes people sit there and they have an idea, they have this inner calling that they want to make a difference in the world. And we already heard that, you know what? Recognizing somebody's spirit who's struggling near you, no matter where you are, I think is something that everybody should take from this. Look people in the eyes, realize that they're a human being. Don't just ignore them. If you don't have money, don't give them money, but still say hello recognize their spirit but also there's so many non-for-profits out there that can make an impact and you can make an impact sometimes in your own community in small ways either grabbing your friends and having a little charity event where you raise money for something that's near and dear to you but the Salvation Army is there because people donate their money and their time and their efforts. And that helped you. And now you're going back and you're giving back to people. And I just want everybody to remember that the small little differences make a huge impact. And you can make a difference. And then on the flip side, I want everybody to also remember if you do have a family member or if it's yourself struggling with this disease, that or any disease for that matter that there's help out there and that real change can happen if we're all in a loving place with it i i kate you know the one thing that you had that the salvation army did for me when that when i entered they treated me as a human um i was sick broken um, and really quite honestly out of my mind i could hardly read a newspaper they knew where i came from they treated me with dignity um, they gave me food, they gave me medicine, they gave me a doctor, and they didn't rush my recovery. It wasn't 28 days in and you're out of here. It's stay with us until you get yeah. better. And, um, you know, I, they're in my will. I'll never forget what uh, those people did for me. I mean, it um, just the, the situation where they treated me like a human being meant more to me at that time than anything. I had been through a number of hospitals and a number of very bad spots and each and every one was tougher and rougher and I was sicker and sicker um, and when I finally got to the Salvation Army a, uh, a doctor and a psychiatrist really treated me with dignity respect and today I interact with the psychiatrist from time to time I, I will run into him and he'll, he just looks at me and he goes John you know you're just really fortunate the world you came from not many people come back from I um, I did have, I, I don't know whether you knew this, Katie, I had had the last right three times I, through my journey. Um, it really was a, um, it's I, 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 that I, is you know, such sometimes strength. I just, I just kind of wonder it's a miracle. what it's, I'm doing. I, my work at the jail is very important to me because I almost, I get a sense that this is. How often did you say you go to the I jail? I go once a week. I'm See? there from eight in the morning till six at night. And it's um, fabulous. I deal with people that are struggling with the same disease mm -hmm. I have. So, giving it, back is so essential. And it's good in for life. you. It's good for yes. me. Also. Yes. Yes. Somewhat selfish, but um, it's. Uh, I, I really appreciate the opportunity to talk about this. John, I thank you thank from you. the bottom of my heart. You know how much I love you, and your story, and how our lives interconnected. It is odd. Too. I'm okay. so completely grateful for you coming in today and sharing this. And I know the world is as well because this is what people need to hear. Thank you very much, Katie. Thank you, John. Thank you. NAMI DuPage is your resource for free mental health services. Whatever your needs, we offer one-on-one -on -one support with a trained peer specialist, weekly support groups, or we serve as an alternative to the hospital ER with our family education classes. We also offer social recreation classes for you and your family, as well as job readiness programs. At our beautiful community center in Wheaton, you will find a safe, non-judgmental, and supportive environment to help with your mental health needs. Welcome back, KDO's Food Carnival, Feed the People. I welcome you actually into my home on this one because I want to demonstrate real life, my family and our very close friends and how life happens. 
and how we process that. So what I wanna do is share a beautiful array of the food I just showed you, which is the mashed potato bar with toppings and the fun chicken fingers and how it actually does feed my people because my people are very verbose and they will tell me if I'm not feeding them right. And they love it. So you're gonna see that portion of it. But then I'm gonna go and explore. And one of the areas that I'm gonna share with you is the kids. Because one of the things that we gift each other as families is recognizing that yes, problems happen. There are situations in the world that occur and they affect us, but they affect us as a family. How do we rely on our brothers, sisters, mothers, best friends? What do we do about it? We listen and we speak. And that's how we grow together. That's how we feed each other's spirits. When something challenges us, we strengthen each other with our gift of love and support. So let's now go and meet the kids. So here I sit with the boys. And this is Charlie, innocent Charlie at five years old. This is just the guy you need to hug and love and have smile at you in the morning, right Charlie? And I have a, I have a friend, his name is Nicholas and he lives across the street and we play with him regularly, right? And he's your best friend? Yeah. Oh, so fun. That's the kind of friendships that we all keep for life and we remember forever. Now, once again, a friendship. We have Patrick and Kevin over there that are brothers and Will in the middle, who's the best friend. Guys, talk about your friendship. Well, um, well like, certainly we met. Like, like, yeah. Okay, so we met like a lot of years ago. Uh, and it was instant friendship. Mm -hmm. And Will kind of just filled that little gap in between Patrick and Kevin, and it was awesome, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Phil, Will filled right into our family. And recently, I'm gonna share with you that we had a little tragedy in the neighborhood where a 16-year-old had committed suicide. Now, Will, Patrick and Kevin were very familiar with this boy and had no idea that he was suffering the way he was. And it, their response to each other was what? To pick up the phone, right? Mm -hmm. Was your first instinct to call each other? Yeah, yeah I, I was kind of, actually, I said I didn't have a phone. I was like, please, Patrick, call me, please. <laughs> yeah, I wanted to talk to Will because Will's my best friend. I'm like, I'm, I wanted to say to him, did you hear what happened? And he said, he said, he said, yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, I just wanted to talk to Will because I, I think I can said, tell, oh my gosh. Yeah, I think I can tell Will anything. And it kind of helped us all get through it, didn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, we were allowed to talk about it together and recognize that people out there are suffering and we may not know it. And what we can do is be friends with each other and to see people, right? When they're suffering or they're sad, and to be kind to everybody, right? All right, now we're gonna go over and we're gonna meet the girls. Let me introduce my daughter, Lindsay, her cousin, Kelly, and my sister, Molly. Now this is an interesting side of the story because unlike the boys, we're getting into junior high and high school. And I just want them to kind of share with you some of the issues that they recognize in their environments and how they handle them with each other. So who wants to start, Linz? Do you want to talk about anything that you, maybe you witness or you see or you do? Um, well, like, there was this one girl in our grade that um, was, like, pretty depressed and everything. But everyone in our grade, like, really supported her and everything. So it was really nice. And you did a lot of text messaging. You utilized your phones and your group chats to kind of support this girl as a whole unit and pull together as friends. Is that correct? Yeah. That's super. It's That's super. Whole school, like and she can feel that support and she can see it, which is so phenomenal. So. That's amazing, and that's only in eighth grade. So when you think about it, now we're moving into high school, and Kelly's a junior. So that the pressures get bigger, and the problems get bigger. So what's going on kind of in your world that you recognize? Um, like, 
The hard things about like problems in high school is mainly the fact that like there's so many people so like it's hard to like recognize when someone's like dealing with an issue but like you know when they are just like building a support system um being there for your friends um i have my mom so that's my support system and so like you know just building that support system teachers like people feel like they can't talk to teachers but i feel like you can trust them and trust other people in the high school that's so important you know we've heard a couple of things here because one having a safe home environment where the kids can come and actually lean on their parents as a support and as a friend in need a loving safe environment to guide them through these issues are so important and we were structured that way by my mom and you know so we carry that through with our children which is really really important but then you also need to be able to lean on your friends the friends that are your peers that are going through it at the same time now doesn't it help couldn't you see having your friends over if something big happened and just serving the mashed potatoes and chicken oh yeah you could. like everybody would love it wouldn't they? yeah they would like all ages so I'm gonna tie the food in because that's important you can have family and friends over without it breaking the bank my suggestion this season is absolutely the most important thing is to bond together and to be there and feed the people is the whole point feed their souls feed each other so KDO's food carnival we wish you well and we look forward to seeing you very soon NAMI DuPage is your resource for free mental health services. Whatever your needs, we offer one-on-one -on -one support with a trained peer specialist, weekly support groups, or we serve as an alternative to the hospital ER with our family education classes. We also offer social recreation classes for you and your family, as well as job readiness programs. At our beautiful community center in Wheaton, you will find a safe, non-judgmental, and supportive environment to help with your mental health needs.